and welcome to the latest solving video and thanks for tuning in now this is a video i wanted to put out for quite a while so i feel it's so important it's probably in the top two most important things in the world of soldering personally to me this is different size solders basically different thicknesses so i've got a few 0.25 millimeter ones down the left hand side got a couple of 0.5 millimeters in the center and over here i've got a 0.7 millimeter and a 0.9 millimeter now you can imagine a lot of hobbyists probably only got one size, for instance say a 0.7 and if you're trying to do fine pitch work you're really going to struggle, it can be done but obviously to make it a lot easier if you've got a 0.25 for example that would really really going to aid you. So I'm going to show you a few demos on the way through where I use sort of certain sizes for certain jobs. Hopefully by the end of the video you'll sort of see the worth of uh, yeah, maybe getting two or three sizes. I'll also talk about where I get my solders and uh, yeah, general sort of stuff like that. So hopefully you enjoy the video, hopefully you learn something and uh, yeah, it's going to be worthwhile and it really aids you in the future. So we move on now, I'll do a few demos like I say on the way through, showing you a few applications where I use certain sizes and uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy it and uh, yeah, hopefully it can really aid you. So we move on to them now. Moving on to the first demonstration, this one's going to basically just demonstrate how important 0.25 is when you're doing your fine pitch stuff, it's just going to make your life so much easier. Basically, with, I've got this IC, I've already tacked it on, sort of all four sides in certain positions. I've actually tacked the first pin on there, which probably should have done one down the centre, so I'm going to start with that pin. Basically, I'm going to do about the first 10 joints with a 0 0.25, then I'll sort of show the larger sizes, how difficult it is with them. Basically, you can feed the 0.25 in as you go. You don't need to feed it in every joint. You can probably do two or three joints, but you sort of need to feed some more in. But by it being so small, you can basically feed the perfect amount into your iron before you load it onto the joint. So first thing I do, as always, I'm going to just run a fillet of flux along the joints. Basically, I always do this in my soldering. Flux is vital when you're soldering. So yeah, get yourself some good flux and uh, that really aid you as well. Basically, you just run a fillet of flux right along all the joints. Basically, a lot of people ask me what I use. I just use basically a cable tie, plastic cable tie. Now these joints actually look soldered already, but yeah, basically I can assure you they are loose. As you can, I just sort of nudge a few. As you can see, they're sort of all, all loose. They sort of do look soldered, but yeah, definitely not. So basically, yeah, this is a where the 2.25s sort of a, a godsend when you're doing your fine pitch stuff. Basically, get a little bit sort of uh, loaded onto your iron tip. Basically, you can just start feeding them in. So you probably do three or four joints with the amount you've got on there. Then you can just basically sort of load some more on. If you get short, don't matter, you can sort of pull it off quite easy. Just add a little bit more. Just do two or three at a time. Just add a little bit more. This is where it's great because you basically just add the sort of right amount. Just go to about there. Just go back over them so you get a lovely sort of fillet of solder right down sort of right down the sides round to the back and I'll try and blow this up just to give you a better sort of view of the joints it's a job to see this because no, they're actually really small joints it's a job to see this I'll get some photos and put them up later and uh, you should get a good view there right so that's basically about the first sort of dozen joints down to about there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to bring in the larger size solders and this is where it's basically life becomes harder. So I'm actually going to just bring in a 0.5 I'm just going to lay it on there. As you can see if you were trying to solder with this, how you how it would be really difficult to feed that into your iron tip and get the right amount. Now imagine a lot of hobbyists probably only got one size solder in their, in their collection, possibly a 0.7 or 0.9 so if you were trying to sort of, uh, yeah, basically work with this one to do a fine pitch device, you're really going to struggle. So you can imagine bringing that in and trying to load the right amount on there. You're just going to get a giant amount. You're basically going to short everything. It's going to be pretty impossible to load the right amount. Yeah, as you can see, <laughs> it's rather, rather larger than the joints. So that's where, let's say, the 0.25 is vital for this sort of, uh, this sort of work. So you yeah, get yourself a reel of that, and uh, yeah, you'll sort of in, really enhance your soldering skills so this point nine is sort of vital for other jobs larger jobs which i'm going to show some demos later that's where the point two five is no use because you're going to be feeding it in all day so yeah we move on to a few demos uh, after this one i'll also put a few photos up 
places to get the stuff and uh, yeah, some sort of the sort of codes on the reels that I use. So I've got a great lead uh, sort of lead free sold that I use from a company called BLT Circuits in England. They're a great company. I get all my solders from them. So if, yeah, if you're looking for a good supplier in England, that's the company to go for. I'll put all their details up later. I've got no ties to them, so yeah, I'm not a I'm sort of not an employee. I just love their products. So yeah, basically what they move on to a few more demos and uh, yeah, hopefully you see the worth of getting some different size solders. Right, so before we move on to the larger solders, I just want to show you this quick uh, IC here. Now this is slightly larger pitch than the last one. This is one where basically I can feed the 0.25 in on every joint as I go along. I'll probably do sort of 10 or so joints. Unlike the last IC where I sort of fed enough to sort of do three or four joints, this is an example where the 0.25 is perfect. Do sort of every joint as you go. And I'll then do a few of the 0.5 and we we'll see if we can get it you know, fairly similar. 0.5 is probably okay for this pitch, but the 0.7 and 0.9 sort of will be too large. I'll sort of bring them in at the end and we try one with that. So I'm going to use an SN100SB lead free for this one. It's another great solder from BLT. It's my favourite lead free solder. So yeah, if you uh, if you like what you see, maybe you could contact them and uh, try and order some. So we'll move on to, so I'll get this tacked in position, then we we'll flux it up and then we we'll move on to do the soldering. So we're going to start this IC basically by a small bead of flux right along the whole length. I'm going to do it with a cable tie dipped into a little flux pot. I've spoke about the fluxes I use etc in other videos. So basically what we're going to do first is so we take the can some onto the end of a plastic cable tie. Just run a small bead right along the front. The flux is vital in soldering, always use it. Even though your solder's got fluxes in it, they, that tends to burn away too quick. So basically what we're going to do here, I'm going to do half the joints, roughly down to about, say, that point there, with 0.25, just feeding it in as we go, one, one leg at a time. So this is this perfect pitch for 0.25. Then we do the second half with 0.5. I'll sort of show you the difference in a sort of standard of joints. So we do the first half of 0.25, just place your on in there, just feed it in one at a time. So these joints are the perfect size for this sort of solder. Just do roughly 10 of these. We do a couple more. We do that. That should do that. So we've got about 10 joints there, nicely. As you can see, you've got a consistency right along them. You can still see the outline, the front, the pin, and that's what you're aiming for. So basically, from about that point there, I'm going to now do these ones with 0.5, and you'll see I won't be able to quite get the same sort of, sort of amount of solder on there as these 0.25s. So basically, we'll load these others up with 0.5 and we'll see what they look like. So just Tim, get some on the end of my iron tip to start with, as per the last sort of little clip. And again, we're going to go in these one at a time. No matter how quick you are, you'll always get more solder on these because of the thickness of the solder. Now these are going to be fine for hobbyists, but if you want to get to smaller and smaller stuff, there's going to be too much solder on these. So as you can see, they're rather bulbous compared to the first sort of ten. So really, ideally, to enable yourself to improve in the future, this is what you want to aim for, that sort of size. These are a bit too bulbous. So they'd be fine for your hobby, sort of hobbyist uh, ICs, but if you want to sort of get to smaller and smaller and more, a bit more serious about your soldering, try and aim for the sort of the, the amount of the first pins. So yeah, hopefully uh, that sort of showed you sort of where to use the 0.25. Now I'm going to move on now to some larger solders where they come into play. Then after a couple of demos on that, I'll just talk about a few more sort of positions where sort of the smaller solder again can come into play. So we'll move on to the first of the, uh, the larger solder demos now.
Right, so moving on from the thinner gauge sole, 0.25 and 0.5, come to a perfect example where a 0.9 is really handy. Now I've got this cable to solder to a board here with the inner sort of strands coming through. It's quite a quite a large sort of cable, quite a large sort of strands inside. Basically, if you were using 0.25, uh, which I've seen people do, the danger is if you feed your solder and sort of, well, you'd be feeding it all day for a start, so I wouldn't use this, but if you was feeding it in this sort of size, I've, I've seen it where about an inch of this can go through and form a tail on the other side. It gets soldered off on, on the top side around here. You'll end up with a, sort of a tail, you know, and you're in sort of danger of shorting things out on the other side. So to avoid that, if you ever do, if you have to use really narrow solder, which you ideally don't want to, try and feed it in flat so it can't go through the hole and, uh, and form this tail. So basically, yeah, so this is where a sort of 0.9 is really good for a larger, much larger sort of soldering area than, than the last videos. Again, I'm just going to add a tiny fillet of flux to show you how sort of this one works out. Don't really need too much on this. Just put a fillet around the base. Now I've got a larger sort of soldering iron tip here and I'm going to go around from the back. Normally I'd, I'd normally hold my iron tip on this side because I'm sort of right handed. But just for the sake of the video I'm going to take it around the back and try, try and do it from there. So this is like I say, this is a lead, leaded solder. It's a Loctite 36260 EN. It's basically available from Farnell, RS components, sort of general sort of distributors, Mauser, sort of DigiKey. So BLT also do all these leaded solders. So yeah, just hunt around, try and find a good deal for yourself. And uh, so you'll easily pick these leaded ones up. Now, because there's quite a lot of sort of fumes come off of this, it's good if you've got an extractor of some kind. So basically, yeah, you'll see the uh, you see where this 0.9 is really handy. It'll go in the area quite quickly. It'll go through the strands, fill up the hole around the base. Whereas if you were doing this at 0.25, you'd be there, yeah, a long time. It's basically, got about the right amount on there now. It's gone right around the base, right up the strands. Just going to lay a little bit on the top so it sort of runs down and fills the strands up. So you've got a nice amount there. I'm just going to give that a quick clean. Sort of flux is uh, masking sort of the, what the joint looks like. I'll try and get some of it off. Won't get the, sort of all of it. Actually, it's probably quite difficult to clean this. I'll probably block it in the video. So I'll probably clean this up and take a photo. And then I'll put that up at the end. But as you can see, you've got a nice fillet right around the base. It's gone right with the strands into the top. But say if you're doing it 0.25 you'd be there ages and you're in danger of getting that tail going through the other side so yeah so every solder has got its use and uh, it's just finding out sort of what scenario needs what solder so i'll just do another one of these sort of large solder demos and then uh, like i said earlier i'll do show you a couple more sort of places where the 0.25 is handy and then we'll put a few photos up after that so uh, yeah moving on to the other demo another scenario now where 0.9 or 0.7 solder is really handy now this is soldering reworks, so that's good for that as well at certain times. Now I've got these five joints on the top, you can see coming through the hole, the through hole joints, and they belong to this gold connector that's underneath. It's basically the way I could get this out, I'm going to sort of join all five pins together with uh, one big blob, blob of solder. I've got quite a large tip on and that component, should you should see it drop out underneath the connector. Now if you're trying to join all them five pins together quickly, with the 0.25 or the 0.5 as you can see you're going to really struggle you're going to sort of feed it in for a long time and you don't really want to sort of have the iron on there too long so that's basically sort of not much use 0.25 whereas I'm going to again I'm going to bring the 0.9 in we used in the last video and as you can see I should be able to sort of short all these five pins together pretty quickly and you should see the sort of gold body underneath sort of drop out so again, it's good for some reworks. Like I say, you sort of get to know what scenario requires what solder. So basically I'll quickly show you how I'll drop this out. It's a good way of dropping sort of connectors out like this. Just put a bit of flux around the base. Again, there will be some fumes because it's sort of leaded solder. It's the same solder as we used in the last one. So basically what I'll do here, just short all five pins together. So you're going to be there a long time. If you do it 0.25, just keep feeding it and feeding it, and eventually you get all five joined. I 
will dry on top. You should see it drop out the bottom. So the heat will go through. There you go. So that's fallen through. All we've got to do now is we've got five good pads. So it's got to whip the solder out of the holes and uh, basically fit a new connector if that was your problem. So like I say, you're feeding 0.25 in there for a long time, whereas the 0.9 done it fairly quickly. So again, that's a good scenario where you sort of require a large solder. All this stuff on top is just burnt flux. So yeah, there's no sort of damage to the board. It's just sticky flux that sort of turned brown. So, so yeah, basically what we do now, I'm going to go back to the sort of smaller solder. And I'll show you sort of a few more places. I won't do much solder. I'll just go show you a few more places where the sort of smaller solder sort of wins the day. And uh, like I said earlier, we'll put a few photos up. I'm putting some codes up these solders. And uh, yeah, hopefully you sort of find some useful information that can help you out. So we'll go on to the smaller ones and then uh, I'll do all the photos after. Quickly following on from the large solder demonstrations and move on to this sort of general board. Now I'm going to skirt across part of the board just to talk you through what I'd use on this. Now all the pads I haven't got anything fitted there. I'll probably do sort of 0.5mm. The two caps you can see in the middle, 11 and 12, probably do 0.25. They're 0603 size. So just bringing it across the board slowly. Got U6, so that's a sort of icy bit like the pitches I did earlier, so I'll do 0.25 on them. They've got more capacitors of crystal on them corner pads, 0.25 or 0.5. They've got a large, this is a 240 pin fine pitch IC. That's a bit like the pitches from earlier, so I'll do 0.25 on them. So again, skirting across the sort of general 603, 805, so sort of size, so I'll do 0.25 on all them. So going around the other side, you've got more sort of similar components. You've got a resistor network there, that'd be 0 0.25. Even them test points, probably 0 0.5. They're the sort of through hole pins on the other side. Now coming up here, I've got another network, so again 0 0.25. And then there's that sort of a large connector, so that'd probably be a 0 0.5. So the general sort of information from this video is there's not many times when I'd use 0.9. Most of the solder I'll do is 0 0.25 and 0 0.5, so they're the two sizes I definitely recommend getting. So anyway, I'll sort of uh, wrap the video up here. So hopefully you sort of found some useful information. Hopefully it can help you in the future. So yeah, until the next time, uh, thanks a lot for tuning in. And uh, yeah, if you need any solders, like I say, BLT Circuits, based in England, great company, a guy called Greg, get in touch and uh, he'll help you out. So anyway, until the next time, take care and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon.